Ladies and gentlemen, honored to be here in Sacramento, California with Sheriff Jim Cooper right here at the Precious Lives Golf Tournament. How are you, man? Thank you, and welcome to Sacramento. I got a big story for you. What's that? I want to take you to New Mexico, okay? A Sonic fast food employee was arrested this week because he served his customer at the drive through a hot dog. Right. Why would you get arrested for that? Full of cocaine. Cocaine. Oh, ouch. Woo. That is, that is a deadly hot dog. <laughs> That's a hot dog. That's a hot dog. What are you making that? Hot damn. Hot damn. <laughs> now, uh, you know, fast food employees, how would you do that takedown? Do you go through the drive through to get them, or do you go into the store to get in, them? In the store. Drag That's them out. That's a straight in-store search step behind the camera. Drag them out, yeah. You got to go. So, great cause today with the Precious Lives Foundation. Serious work is being done with child trafficking. You've had some mega busts in the past month, but it's interesting. We were just in Las Vegas, and I'm leaving the airport. Actually, from by the time we got to Las Vegas, I'm seeing signs, and it brought me back to like the late 90s, early 2000s, when everywhere you went, guys, you'd see stop smoking campaign, yes. and quit tobacco, and it became, you're, you're like, okay, you see it everywhere. It's on the bus stops here, there. But in Vegas, it was about child sex trafficking. Yes. And I started to say to myself, I'm like, what the hell's going on in this world when these signs are as common as anti-cigarette ads? So where do we stand right now? It's a big deal. So I'm sheriff of Sacramento County. Right. Sacramento is the sixth largest hub in the nation for human trafficking, number six. We just finished an operation in the last month, 102 arrests, 62 girls, 35 Johns. And what's troubling, in 2016, California decriminalized childhood prostitution. So if you're a child under 18, being a prostitute is not against the law. Let's Which break that one down, guys. So since 2016, California decriminalized? Childhood prostitution. What? It, it's stupid. It really is stupid. And last year, a bill took effect where um, loitering for the purposes of prostitution is gone now. So we have women and girls, teenage girls, that are standing out there in bra, panties, in 30 degree weather, when it's raining, they have an umbrella. That's what they wear. And it's unfortunate. In our sting, we got three juveniles, two 16-year-olds and a 13-year-old, a 13-year-old girl. And it's not against the law, so we, we rescued them, got them back with their parents. And then the 16-year-old's back doing it again online. And what's crazy, um, her parents filed a missing persons report. So since she's a missing person, we can go get her. We can't get her for the Prostitution Act. We can get her for being a missing person. So our folks went down to the Bay Area two days ago and rescued her again and bought her back to her parents. That's She's sick. an online ad. It is sick. That is sickening, guys, that we live right now in our own country. Childhood prostitution's legal, but a missing person's is what will get the, the guys looking for you. Or, That's or, crazy. Or curfew violation after 10 o'clock. You can stop a minor for curfew violation, but you can't stop them for an act of prostitution. It's asinine. I think every day we're wondering as a country... Where do you draw the line with the kids? At what point do we stand up and start to say, the priority is protecting the children, protecting a kid's innocence as long as you can. Everything that's happening around, it's very scary how we're, we're treating our children these days. Sure, but they're claiming that this is, they're victims. 100% these women and children are victims, but um, folks are concerned about only getting the traffickers. You've got FBI, Homeland Security, all these law enforcement agencies targeting the traffickers, they're tough to get, and the way you get them is through the girls. That's how we've gotten the traffickers we've gotten so far. And it's a big issue, so a lot of folks don't want to have anything to do with the, do with the girls that's hands off. And unfortunately, you need to deal with that and get their records expunged. And they're victims, but if you, if you just do the victim mentality only, we're never going to solve this crisis. It has gotten exponentially worse. Right now, we're in a day and age where you turn on the internet, on TikTok, on Instagram, on all these platforms, it's like they're, um, they're being shown that sex sells from the age of who knows how old, whenever your yes. kid gets a phone in their hand, really. And um, that scares me. Just as a consumer, I don't even have a kid yet, but I look at that and that worries me. You know, and then all these girls that you've, you've come in contact with, saved or gotten out of this life or, or caught in these acts, whatever, are 
are they kidnapped into it? Are they wanting to get into it for the money? Are they lured into it? Like, what is the path you're seeing? We see a lot that are lured into it. Yeah. Obviously, once that, once that trafficker, that pimp takes hold, and we can't say pimp in the courts. They have to say trafficker. Right. It's like, no, they're pimps, they're right. not traffickers. Anyways, once it takes hold, they use threats, they use violence, they use drugs to get these girls. And it's really hard to break that. They're, in some regards, they're a victim, but they're, they're a hostile victim because that pimp influences them. And people go back again and again and again. And you have to break that span of control and really separating, separate them from that trafficker. And that's really the key with that. And, yeah, I love you. I take care of you. I give you drugs. One of these traffickers that we arrested recently, his girlfriend was seven months pregnant. He had her out there, and he was trafficking her. While she's pregnant? While she's pregnant, seven months. That's sick. That's sick stuff. It is. And the thing about Precious Lives um, they're here to help these girls and raise money. So it's, I commend the athletes and all the participants here. They're actually making a difference. Yeah, it is cool. It's cool when you can see athletes, entertainers, and everybody come together for the greater good. And I think this is one of those that everyone takes dead serious, but we hear about it so much. And I think so many of us, myself included, are like, what is sex trafficking exactly? You know what I mean? Because you don't, you don't know. Like, you hear these stories of a van pulls up and kidnaps a kid. And that scares the hell out of you. Right, or the mall, someone shopping, hey, gorgeous, let's take a picture of you, come with us. And that happens a lot where people, like, they would say, my kid would never, ever do that. And their bottom line, they're kids, and an adult can manipulate a kid. I don't care how smart your kid is. Um, an adult can go in there and say things and do things and turn your kid on a dime. It happens every day. Have you talked to any of these kids after you've rescued them about how the hell they got into this life? Yeah, at the mall, as simple as the mall. The one girl at the really? mall met one somebody, yes. End up with her being trafficked. And what did he do? What did he say? Talk to her. Hey, you're pretty. Let's take pictures. A little shoplifting there. A little drugs, and then just cascades down when they find themselves in that life, being forced to do it. What drugs do you notice them? Methamphetamine, heroin, yeah. a lot of drugs the girls are introduced to. It really is. How, what do you say to parents right now with kids, maybe in middle school, high school, who are starting? You know, they got to worry about these kind of things. You've got to watch your kid and be a parent. We see a lot of parents that are detached. The kids have the phones, the social media. You have to be in control of that and know who they're talking with. That is a big issue with social media these days. A lot of these transactions and trafficking happens because of these cell phones. These cell phones do it. That's where all the information is. So be careful. Know who your kid's friends are. Know where they are. And you cannot be too cautious. Now... How does the operation, I guess I don't, we don't want like the behind the scenes like details of I guess how you trap these guys and catch them, or the traffickers that is, but like is there a, a, a starting point to where you see and then for each John or each pimp do you see how many people do they usually have attached to them? It just depends. They may have one, they may have seven or eight. Yeah. It really depends. But it, it, a lot of fear, a lot of violence. These girls are beaten up out there. They're making them work out there. They don't care about conditions. Give me the money, go back out there right away. Right. It's just, it's, for them, it's a business. So it, it, it's horrific for these girls. Imagine being 13, being trafficked. What's your life like? And it's tough to get out. That's disgusting. In California, we know obviously California is right there with Mexico and all that. Is there an international aspect to this thing or is it a... There's an international aspect. We're not even talking about massage parlors, right. where we have massage parlors and there are so many throughout California that are, for the most part, unregulated. There's so many things going on, and law enforcement is so busy. And right now, the big emphasis has been on the girls on the streets. But the massage parlors are an issue, too, with folks being trafficked there. How many years have you been an officer? Uh, 31 years as a sheriff, and I spent eight years in the legislature. Wow. So when some of these bad laws were being passed, I was fighting against them as an assemblyman. So for 31 years, you've seen this stuff. now. What do you think it's going to take for, just in the past five, how has it been operating in a capital city as an officer? Have, have, has the public's attitude changed, or is that more what we see on the media? I think it's been horrific. The public, they go to work every day. They have jobs. They have children, families to raise, and they expect lawmakers to, to take care of those things. Yeah, and they really, have our back. Yeah, they, and they really don't know what goes on. A lot of these bad bills that are voted on, they have no idea. And let me tell you, there's some horrible bills being passed in the legislature that impact us. And for instance, you can't even interview a juvenile. They passed a law two years ago. So if, if we end up arresting someone or dealing with someone under 18 years old, we can't advise them of their rights. We can't interview them. So how do you expect us to get that pimp if we cannot interview that girl unless she has an, an attorney there? 
it, it's just it, it's very frustrating. Why do you think this is? Why, why, why are we in a world right now where these laws are so crazy to protect the kids? Because with reforms, we went way overboard. There were some reforms that were needed in, in general, but it just went way overboard. And no one wants to be seen as, you know, anti-reform. Right. And reforms are just right now are killing us and our kids. It's like the fentanyl and drug crisis. Right. There's no strong fentanyl laws for dealers. And, you know, thousands of folks, have, people have died from fentanyl overdoses. This is a question, I, you know. So fentanyl, we hear about fentanyl all the time. Fentanyl is used as what? Just to stretch the drugs, to try to cut them? Yes, like, but we're it? seeing in marijuana, we're, it's all over the place. No kidding. So you never know which, in, a, in pill form, you never know what fentanyl is going to be um, potentiated with in other drugs. And that's the problem. And it's just giving, it gives a stronger effect to the users, but they could kill them. Correct. So guys, think about this. Think about that before you do anything. As simple as marijuana, something in California. I'm from the East Coast. Right. So marijuana was always something that was like, you know, they talked about like cocaine and things like that. Like you didn't touch it. it was always, then come to California. Right. And when you land at the airport in, in Oakland, which is where I landed, you see signs for it. There was right. a sign I saw that said, happiness. DP's in the house. <laughs> we, saw a sign, we saw a sign that said, happiness sold here. And I don't care if you, if you smoke or if you don't smoke, how you feel about it. It was funny to me right. that an advertisement said where kids could see it, happiness is sold here. And it was drugs they're talking about. We, weed's a big deal. And you talk about it was supposed to be kept from kids. We've got it rampant use in high school and middle school with kids doing marijuana. It is a big deal. Um, the black market is bigger than the legal market in California. And now they're finding fentanyl in some of the weed. In some of the weed. It was laced with it. That's nuts. Yeah. So you never know what you're going to get. And that's the kind of stuff, guys. You know, that was the thing that always kept me from drugs growing up was you hear about people could try a drug and die yes. right away. So to me, that was always like, I'm not doing it. And that's happening with fentanyl. It's scary. It's a scary it world right now. So what do you tell parents, right? I'm sure you have a lot of friends, obviously, that ask you, hey, if my kid's in high school, middle school, what do you tell them? Like, no. What do you tell the kid right now growing up in this world? You have to be engaged. You can't. Leave anything to chance. Right. Be involved in your kids' lives. Know who their friends are, what they're doing, their social media, and just be that parent. And don't be a, it's, it's not about being your child's friend. It's about being a parent. Mm -hmm. And as a parent, it's a dictatorship, not a democracy with kids. And we see that too often with parents where they're letting the kids, oh, I want to let them spread their wings and do that. You can't do that in this day and age. And that's what they're being told every single day. Yeah. It's like, hey, no, no, your kid parents you now. Yeah, exactly. That's new rules. Yeah, no. I'm the parent. <laughs> so take us into when you're gearing up for one of these busts, like what's going on? Uh, we go out there and we talk about it. And it, it hey, it's a misdemeanor in California, but this really impacts the lives of a lot of girls and young boys that are out there being trafficked. It is a horrific existence. And then the, the, the men that show up and prey on these people. So we really want to make a difference and hopefully rescue them and save their lives. But the golden goose is that trafficker and they are very hard to get. I, I cannot stress that enough. Is there any way that the community can get involved to make that easier or is that the, just straight legislation? Legislation, the community's gotta get angry and say enough's enough. And I, I, I always wonder where's that tipping point? And I don't know where it is. Well, I think guys right now to anybody watching this, when we look around the country and we see the way that our children are being preyed on and the, the fact that this is a conversation, like I said, as simple as quitting tobacco, it's really disgusting, and I think it is at the point where everybody needs to stand up and say, there's nothing more important than our children and the safety of our children, and, you know, use your voice. And I, is that, That's the thing. It's like, use your voice, spread the word. But, like, I wish there was more solid action items we could take to just cut this stuff out. 100%. 100%. It's it a scary time to be a, to be a young person Absolutely. in this country. Well, I'm excited that you're here protecting, you know, the youth of our nation, and it'd be great, guys. Remember... Voting is when legislation changes. Make sure the people representing you, representing us, are actually here caring for us. And, man, I can't thank you enough for the work you do. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And if you guys want to get involved, the Precious Live Foundation is doing their part out here. We're out here having a good time for a good cause. But, man, you're out there every day putting in the tough work, putting your life on the line, and respect the hell out of you and love you for it. Thank you. Love you thank too, you brother. Absolutely.